Well, good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle. It is Thursday, Clyde, the day before Friday. You TikTok. know how we feel about Friday. <laughs> That's right. TikTok, we're counting down. <laughs> good morning, Mona. Good morning. Hey, you know what, Clyde? Um, I, I know you're not originally from here, but you've been here long enough. Do you love the Cincinnati Zoo? I do. I do. Uh, one of the best in the world. I agree. I agree. Well, guess what? They have brought back feeding the giraffes. Mm. And that was one of my great memories of the zoo. They, they would have um, you put a little bit of food in your hand, and I think it cost a quarter. And now it costs $4, but, you know, that's mm. been 50 years ago. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things have changed just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they changed. And um, um, and you and the giraffe would come to you and lick the food right out of your hand, and I just love that. That was so great. Well, it's back four dollars. Um, you are required to wear a mask for your safety and the safety of all the animals, and you can do that daily, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. and 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. at the Cincinnati Zoo. Now, so I'm now, excited about that. Now, time. Mona, I, I, I gotta ask this question because I've never had the experience you've had. What, 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 is, what is giraffe lick like? I'm not a big fan of dog lick. So yeah. tell me what giraffe lick is like. Well, the tongue is so long. I, I wanna, I, I can have to see, we have, um, some fun facts about giraffes, but it's his tongue is kind of rough, so uh -huh. he would stick it through the cage. Uh -huh. they, they'd have bars, and he'd stick it through the, the bars, and he would just his tongue would be so long it would just come right out, and it's a little bit rough, and uh -huh. take it right out of your hand. And, oh, and I was so and, excited. And then let me and just say this: like, breath. Let me, let me just say this: giraffe breath. Can you give yes. me some uh, some hint? <laughs> hey, it's very similar to mine behind the mask once in a while. I'm telling you. You know, right? We have to, we have Didn't to wear that you mask. Just hear that? You know, you smell your own breath, right? <laughs> but it's also very, it's also wow. about like my first, my first kiss in in high school. Yeah, it was really slobbery. They left a lot of slob on your hand as well. So, but it's still fun. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> this has been an education. Folks, you only hear this kind of stuff here on Sensi Lifestyle. That's right. Well, well, Clyde, I hope a lot of young people will get out to the Cincinnati Zoo and um, <laughs> see. Oh, oh, they just showed it. Okay. 20 inches long. That's how long a giraffe's Ooh, tongue is. 20 that's, inches. That's a lot yeah, of giraffe you know, it's really mucus. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot too. You do have to wash your hands right afterwards. So yeah. enjoy people visiting the zoo today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. All right. Well, um, we uh, of course are uh, got a number of things in the program ahead for you today. So uh, we want you to stay tuned. And one of the things we want to talk to you about is a concept uh, that is embodied in the title of this company, Ashley's Apron. It's about nutrition and the uh, Ashley in question is the one who wears the apron and that's from whence her inspiration came. So Allie's got more on that for us. Well, she's an aspiring cheerleader, a fitness instructor, and a culinary chef in the making. I'd like to welcome Ashley Martinez. Yes, and she is going to be showing us a very tasty snack that will leave us feeling guilt-free. Ashley, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Today we're making superfood crunch bars. What are the ingredients that we have to start with? Well, you are going to need dark chocolate chips. You're gonna need about a half cup. And then also you're gonna need a half cup of peanut butter, natural peanut butter. So anytime I'm choosing natural peanut butter, I try to look for the one that has the fewest ingredients, about a half cup in there. But first and foremost, melt the chocolate. So we're gonna stick this in the microwave, 30 second intervals. So how did you come up with this recipe too? I am someone that I love chips. I have all different types of chips. I have veggie chips. I have Lay's because they're only potatoes, oil, and salt. Mona will love you. Mona's a chip goer. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, you know, with, with a dessert, I feel like that's something that's missing here and there. So I, I wanted to create some type of recipe that really was well-rounded and gave me that crunch as well. Ooh, 
and um the good thing about uh, this particular recipe too is that you can really make it whatever flavor you want. I've got freeze-dried strawberries, pistachios, and hemp seeds, so all superfoods and very colorful superfoods as well. So we always eat with our eyes, so you might as well make your dessert look pretty, right? <laughs> I'm gonna add that natural peanut butter into the bowl and mix it up. We're gonna microwave it one more time. I like to get the chocolate melted before I add it in. Oh, and when you talk about pairing, chocolate and peanut butter is the best combo. Exactly, see, you're catching on. Yep, chocolate and peanut butter, and I'm someone like, have to have them together. Okay, next we're going to take some puffed brown rice and uh, just add it to a large bowl of rice. We love brown, brown rice, got it. And this is great because there's only a couple ingredients, so it's nothing overly complicated. Yeah, just a couple ingredients. And all I'm gonna do, now that I have that melted, I'm just going to kind of scrape the sides and fold it in and just coat that chocolate mixture all over the brown rice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a bread pan. So I've got uh, one right here. Take some parchment paper and just outline the bottom of this pan. And that is gonna prevent these superfood crunch bars from not sticking. There you go, parchment paper. We're gonna flip that over. We'll put that at the very bottom. And now we're gonna take this mixture and just add it in. And we're gonna take our spatula and just pat it down. Flatten it out. Flatten it out. That's all you gotta do, yep. And last but not least, hit it with just a pinch of salt. Doesn't need too, too much. And all you're gonna do is just pop this in your freezer. But before you do that, to ensure that all the toppings- You have to taste test. <laughs> well, not yet. Almost taste test time. We're gonna take this spoon and the back end of it, we're just gonna push those toppings in to the superfood crunch bars, just so that they stay secure and we can get all of that nutrient punch. So top that in the freezer for about an hour and you're gonna get this beautiful block of Yum. Yeah. And then just make sure to take that parchment paper off on the bottom, easily peel that just like so. All right, and then you're just gonna cut these into whatever size that you prefer. So if you want rectangles, if you want bars, if you want squares, if you want bites, go for it. You could even kind of cut this um, kind of in a, in a messy way and have superfood crunch bark. So oh, nice. get your serrated knife and cut those bars. Yum. So as you are kind of plating this and wrapping this up, what is the best way for people to find you for more information and if you also have more recipes? Absolutely. So you can follow me on Instagram. I'm under Ashley's Apron and there I post recipes every other day. And then you're also going to get to follow my journey of becoming a future Ben gal. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Well, Ashley, this has been so fun and I am for sure going to give this recipe a go and we really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. It was so great working with you this morning and um, I hope you make those superfood crunch bars soon. Oh, you know it. <laughs> when you feel good, you're empowered to do just about anything. And that's the mission behind Team No Excuses. Their all-female team aims to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Here now to talk about that with us right now is Monique Smith, a certified master personal trainer with Team No Excuses, and Emerald Dennis, a client there. Thank you both for being here with us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. So what is Team No Excuses? I'm going to let Emerald answer that for us today. Okay. So Team No Excuses is a health and fitness personal gym. Is less located in Cincinnati, Ohio, but not only that, it's more than fitness. We're a family. 
Okay, all right, and, and why is that important? Uh, it's important because when you work out by yourself, sometimes you need that accountability, that support, the encouragement, the encouragement and you get all that at Team No Excuses. Okay, uh, so Monique, talk a little bit about some of the programs you offer at Team No Excuses. Okay, the programs we offer at Team No Excuses, we do personal group training, meal planning, online training. Um, our newest program that we just launched was My Plus Size Boot Camp, which will launch Thursday, February the 27th. That program is actually geared for women with a BMI, body mass index of 35 and above. So, so talk a little bit about the orientation that I gather is um, more heavily weighted towards female clients, uh -huh. uh, if not exclusively so. Uh, wh wh what was the need you wanted to fill by doing so? Um, it, the, the fitness, this industry is just male dominant. And it's a lot of females that don't want to work out with a personal trainer. They feel like they got to do aerobics. They feel like they got to do um, just swimming or something like that. I wanted to show them that it was, you could come in team, no excuses, and get everything you need. First of all, I have to build that relationship with you and let you know that you can accomplish anything that you put your mind to. That's how you get past making excuses that's like it. I like to do <laughs> to no excuses. <laughs> yes, that's how you get past it. Emerald, tell me a little bit about your experience with Team No Excuses. Um, so far, it has been the best decision I have made. Um, I started in what, November? Yes. No, what, November, the first seven days, I didn't lose, I lost 18.6 pounds. Really? Yes. Okay. And since then, I've lost a total of 42.6 pounds. And now, so, so how, how, are the, how are they keeping you motivated? Uh, so I have her, and then I have my friend um, Ayana, okay. which is her intern as well. And it's just like a every day, even when I don't feel like it. Come on, E, you can do it. Push through. We got goals. Just the inspirational talk, motivation that you need, whatever it is. Even if leave it right there on the floor. Sure. They got me. Sure. Just a few seconds. Personal relationships are way more important than we think in this. Yes. yes. It has to be a personal relationship to get to the goals that you have. The, the trainer and the client has to build a, a reputation. I mean, a personal relationship. Okay. So, to. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. So, talk a little bit about uh, how folks can find you, find out more about Team No Excuses, and maybe sign up. Um, they can go to my website, TeamNoExcusesLLC.com. They can set up a consultation or they can walk into the personal gym in Mount Healthy, um, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45231. Okay. Monique, Emerald, thank you both for being here with us this morning. Thanks, Thanks for you, having us. Indeed. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, it's a Cincy Lifestyle curiosity as requested by you. That's right. You asked about the Cotton Club, and our good friend Greg Hand has the answer. You're in for a swinging good time with this one. All that and more in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Welcome back. Got a question for you. Remember the 1984 movie Cotton Club, the one with Richard Gere in it? Well, that was the Cotton Club in Harlem, but that wasn't the only Cotton Club, nor necessarily the best Cotton Club. Uh, Cotton Club uh, Cincinnati had a Cotton Club too, and its exuberant life and tragic death make it one of those amazing Cincinnati curiosities. The hottest spot in Cincinnati for many years was out in the West End at the Hotel Sterling on the corner of 6th and Mound Streets. The hotel's Cotton Club attracted crowds eager to dance the night away to swinging jazz. Cincinnati's Cotton Club, of course, was named for the original Harlem nightclub in New York City, but the similarities ended at the name. Although New York's original presented the top African-American stars of the day, the audience was strictly segregated and only white customers were admitted. In Cincinnati, the West End Cotton Club was the only fully integrated nightclub in town, endorsed by the famous Negro Traveler's Green Book. Boxer Ezard Charles was a regular and Mae West showed up on the arm of Cincinnati Mayor James Stewart. Pearl Bailey, Sarah Vaughn also stopped in when they were in town. 
The Cotton Club hired integrated bands as well, such as Lenny Lewis's orchestra. Other headliners included Shardina Walker, among the few women band leaders, and King Kolax, a star on the Southern Chitlin Circuit. Other headliners included Monty Frog Morrison and Chris Perkins. The Cotton Club featured comedians between musical acts, including crowd favorites Butterbeans and Susie. The stomping bands at the Cotton Club accompanied frenetic dancing on stage and off, while professionals such as Stella and Flash Ford and Edna Hurd led fantastically costumed chorus lines on stage. The dance floor was filled with young people popping the latest jitterbug moves. On many evenings, the Cotton Club orchestras were broadcast throughout Cincinnati by radio station WCPO. Now, it wasn't just the featured artists who built the Cotton Club's reputation. Cincinnati's big dance halls closed. Their musicians dropped by the Cotton Club for jam sessions that lasted after sunrise. Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, Count Basie brought their best talent to compete with the locals. Sophisticated Cotton Club audiences knew all the complicated arrangements by heart and winced whenever someone dropped a note. So many musicians hung out at the Cotton Club that it became a regular employment agency. Players waited at the iron rail outside the club and anyone looking for talent called out the instruments they needed from passing cars. Cincinnati targeted the West End in the 1950s, condemning most of the neighborhood for destruction. By 1960, the Sterling Hotel was vacant and the Cotton Club was defunct. The building was demolished to make way for I-75. And right now, I want to welcome back our good friend Greg Hand, who curates these curiosities for us. Always good to have you with us, Greg. What was a hotel doing smack out in the middle of the West End? In the day, hotels, the best place to put them was next to a train station. And before Union Terminal consolidated all the rail lines in Cincinnati, there were a number of hotels uh, in various parts of the city, the East End, down by the riverfront, um, and over in the West End. And so what was called the Sterling Hotel, when the Cotton Club existed, was originally built as the Carlisle Hotel and it was located across the street from one of these individual railroad train stations. So Greg, did Mae West enjoy her visit to the Queen City? I have a feeling that Mae must have had a very good time at the Cotton Club. There was a, um, a, a dance troupe uh, that performed uh, with the bands at the Cotton Club. The uh, typical night would include um, you know, some big bands, some dancing. There were uh, usually comedians. And then mixing up uh, between the acts, there was this chorus line. And report was that May was uh, rumpling up $50 bills and throwing them to the chorus girls as they were dancing at the Cotton Club. So I think that's a sign that either she was enjoying herself a lot or she had a lot of their cheap champagne. So we had a viewer ask us uh, a question about this most recent one. Legend has it, they used to perform a dance called Booty Green at the Cotton Club. So tell us what that was. You know, the uh, Cotton Club has this incredible reputation as a jazz club, uh, but people uh, including Steve Tracy, who wrote a book on blues in Cincinnati, have been starting to excavate a rhythm and blues or soul um, uh, focus at, at the Cotton Club. And in the later days of the Cotton Club, when they were doing a lot of rhythm and blues, there was apparently this dance going around called Booty Green. And it's kind of tough to do research on it because uh, it had a reputation that didn't allow it to be televised or recorded at the time. But there are, if you do a little searching on, on YouTube, uh, some people of a certain age who talk about the booty green and claim that it was the origin of what today we call twerking. So maybe that got its start in Cincinnati. Okay, Greg, thank you for bringing us another one of these great Cincinnati curiosities. Have a good one. Looking forward to the next time. Thank you.
All righty. Well, I'm going to be uh, trying that dance. Booty green. All right. Well, we'll be back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. Plus, be sure to check us out on Facebook. We post all our guest segments and community stories right there for you to watch and share with your friends. So like and follow us now at Facebook.com slash Cincy Lifestyle. We'll be right back. And we're taking a quick look outside. We've had a cold front move through uh, our community today, but for today it's uh, still seasonable temperatures, mild out there with highs in the mid to upper 70s. Hit or miss clouds will dot the sky. Cooler air coming our way. Mona? Well, coming up tomorrow here on Cincy Lifestyle, we celebrate women in film. It's an event that's dedicated to helping women achieve their highest potential within the global entertainment, communications, media. It's going to be great tomorrow. Thanks, Clyde. That it is. Uh, then also tomorrow, one of our military branches is celebrating its birthday. It's the United States Air Force. Uh, we'll talk with a career airman about why he chose this path and why he recommends it for the younger generation. We've got all that whole lot more tomorrow right here on Cincy Lifestyle. We appreciate you watching us and joining us. Hey, remember, somebody called in, and that's why we had the Cincinnati Curiosity segment we had today. So reach out. We'd be glad to hear from you. We very much appreciate you watching us on this Thursday, September 17th. Make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video. And if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, we love to say it, make it a great day.